We praise you. We praise you. We thank you. We adore you. We give you thanks and praise, O Lord Almighty, acknowledging your supremacy in all the universe. You are a mighty king, the king above all kings. And you reign not just on the heavens and the earth, O Lord, but also in our hearts and in our lives as well. O Lord God, as we begin this meeting, we bow down before you. We acknowledge our nothingness before you. Every day we live, each breath we take is your gift to us, O Lord. We now want to give it all unto you to do your will and to glory you not just in our words but in our deeds as well. O oh Lord God, grant us the strength and the clarity of mind to find our purpose and walk the path that you have laid out for each one of us. In all things, in every situation, in all circumstances, may your will be done in our lives, O Lord, as we wait upon your perfect timing. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts and kindle in us the fire of your divine love. Open our hearts to these words that we are going to listen to from Brother Craig and from all our brothers and sisters here. And teach us, O oh Holy Spirit, through your word. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Don. That was wonderful prayer. Now we go on to our worship, and then it will be all over to Brother Craig. And at the end, we'll have the intercessory prayer led by Brother Craig and a quick divine mercy. So before we go into our worship song, this is this worship, as Brother Don said, it is not only through words, but also in our deed. It is not a feel good factor, but it is a feel God factor. In worship, we connect to the reality, the ultimate reality of God, his supreme authority. And that is also through the word of God to meet God and holy and to meet to have the Bible alive through the word of God. So that's why every prayer meeting will be a world changing event. It changes lives because God is alive. And therefore we go into the first worship him more love, more power. And today we connect to brother Craig's topic, pain and suffering. So we see what Holy Spirit reveals through St. Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8 to 10. The word of God says, we were really crushed and overwhelmed and saw how powerless we were to help ourselves. But that was good. For then we put everything into the hands of of God, who alone could save us, for he can even raise the dead, and he did help us. Yes. More power, more love. All together, let's participate as God is in our midst.
Before we go into the second worship hymn, we see all the shocks, the sorrows, the struggles, sufferings. We tonight surrender them to the Lord. When anything painful happens to you and I, we've got a choice. We can either run to God or run from God. And we are those believers, we run to God. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse four and five says, God comforts us in all our troubles. 
so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. For the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with his comfort through Christ. Let us, with this truth, enter into this glorious worship hymn. Come Holy Spirit. Satisfy my needs, Lord. Satisfy my needs. Only you can make me whole. Give me strength to make me whole. Come, Holy Spirit. I'm just going to open up the altars here. Those of you that desire tonight to see the, the face of Jesus fresh and to receive a fresh infilling of the power of the Spirit of the living God, come gather around the front, lift your hands to the Lord and say, Fill me, God. Fill me to overflowing. Satisfy my needs. Some of us here today, we've been looking in all the wrong places. There's only one place where the needs of our life can be met. That's in the spirit of the living God. Oh, make me whole, Jesus, yeah. Come, oh, Holy Spirit, my Jesus. Follow fresh on me. Lift your voice in victory now, everyone.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And in this spirit, we are going to listen from Brother Craig. Expensive. Well, good evening, everybody, and um, thank you for welcoming me once again. And once more, I have the great privilege to greet you in the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Can you all hear me all right? Yes. Good, good, good. Now, um, it's a difficult subject pain and suffering. And are the crosses that we may be bearing in our Christian walks. It is um, a well-known fact that only through pain and suffering can we uh, move forward in our Christian walk. Oh, right. The first week I was amongst uh, most of you, I gave you um, my testimony, or at least part of it. And 
for those of you who weren't there that night, I'll have to um, include a part of it, uh, which is very pertinent to tonight's talk. When I came to give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Saviour for the first time, I was a very broken person. I had come to the lowest point than anybody could possibly come. I was completely broken. I'd been uh, incredibly wealthy. And I then came to know poverty in a real way. But my life was an absolute mess. I was a semi-crippled because I had broken my back in the Air Force. I was doing a pre-flight check on a, a jet, a Mirage jet fighter, uh, before uh, we were to take it up into the air. And a very large box full of electronics that had not been bolted into the aircraft as it should have been, uh, fell on top of me and crushed me. And it broke my spine in the bottom three parts. I spent the next 14 months in hospital. They said I would never walk again. It was most likely. Uh, and I had to prepare myself for that fact. They did surgery on me that went for nearly seven hours. I had had, uh, I think it was um, six full pints of blood in transfusion. And they had lost me, nearly lost me a couple of times during the surgery. But they used bone off the back of my hips to weld my spine into one solid piece where it was all broken. And after many months of rehabilitation and um, recovery, I could walk very badly, but at least I could walk. And I think I described it in my last testimony. Um, it's hard to imagine what I must have looked like, but when I walked down the streets in my very broken way, uh, a lot of uh, teenagers and children used to laugh at me, and make fun of me. Um, I liken it to uh, a duck trying to walk with two broken legs. I must have looked really quite funny sometimes. So this is the, where I was at when I came to give my life to the Lord. I'd been in this state for 20 years, 20 years of being a cripple. And when I gave my life to the Lord, everything changed. I was so used to being a legal drug addict. Um, I really was a legal drug addict. I used to go to five doctors to keep up my habit because nothing could really take the pain away. I was in acute chronic pain 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day of the year. And it never went, it never left me, and no amount of drugs could stop it. But I tried more and more of the tablets and more and more of the, the different things they gave me, but nothing ever took it away completely. But when I came to the Lord, I found a new strength. I found that I coped better with the pain. I found a new purpose in life. And I was determined to move forward in this new life, this new walk in the Lord. And... Given that I had lost my career completely uh, and any chance of being able to be employable, I ended up working for the Lord. But that's a side issue. About, oh, I'd say about six weeks to eight weeks after I gave my life to the Lord, I went to a... Um, a prayer meeting one night 
and 120 people turned up and this was in a three bedroom house. So needless to say, there was a standing room only. And the leader of the servants of Jesus prayed over me that night. And I went down in the spirit for the first time. Didn't know even what that was at the time. And I came before the Lord. I came before the throne of God. I knew exactly where I was. I knew who was standing before me. I had absolutely no doubts. And to this day, I don't know if it was for two minutes or two hours. Nobody uh, ever managed to uh, convey that to me, but I didn't care anyway. But it felt like a long time. But the point was when I became aware of my earthly surroundings again. I had sat up cross-legged on the floor and I, I thought, I can't sit like this. Um, it was physically impossible with my injuries to sit like that. And I felt very strange and I said to my wife, Rose, I said, I feel strange. I feel very weird and I don't, I can't quite figure out why. But it suddenly dawned on me when I started to get up. I felt very strange because for the first time in over 20 years, I was pain free. The Lord had healed me that night. I even checked, I put my hands around behind my back to check to see if the scar was still there, and it was, and whether the, um, the, all the hard bone was still there where they fused my spine together, and it was, that hadn't changed. But what had changed was the Lord had taken away the pain. And for the first time that night, I actually ran. I hadn't been able to run for 20 years because I couldn't even walk properly. The whole room was in an absolute uproar because my doctor, who had been treating me for all of those 20 years, was in that room and he was telling everybody, because I was new to this group only six or eight weeks ago, um, my doctor assured everyone that he had known me for 20 years and been treating me for 20 years and that it was a genuine miracle. So. There was a lot of excitement that night. And um, I came to realize that my testimony, my, my injury and my healing was for a purpose. Now that you'll have to wait for as we move forward. So just remember what I've told you because it's very relevant to this talk. So as we move forward, which is the best one? That one. Yeah. So I'll finish it later. Okay. So we read in Romans 5, it's rather a long verse, Romans 5, 1 to 11. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have uh, peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into his grace in which we stand and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. So it's only through our suffering that we can understand, even in a small measure, what Christ did for us. 
For while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, we're all sinners, Christ died for us. And since therefore we have been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life? More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. So our suffering helps us in part, only in part. Remember the crucifixion was the worst execution known to man, worst ever. There were none worse. James 1, 2 to 4. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be, may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Now, like last week, there's a lot of scriptures, and I even uh, cut the PowerPoint short. Um, so that's not just the, that blank screen you're seeing all, all night. But it's important. Uh, I'll try and choose my next talk so there's not quite so many full-on scriptures coming here one at a time. But it's important. We have to understand that we need to suffer. Luke 14. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. We cannot follow Jesus if we are not able to carry our own cross, just like he carried his. Impossible. Our spirits... Oh, where'd that come from? That must have been a one I forgot to get rid of. Psalm 119. It was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees, Lord. So this is something David wrote. It was good for him to be afflicted so that he might learn God's decrees. And it was written for us so that we might understand that concept. Without suffering, we will not grow. 1 Peter 4. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial among you, which comes upon you to prove you as though a strange thing happened to you. But as you are partakers in Christ's sufferings, rejoice. So don't be all grumbly and mumbly when you have to go through some trial or some suffering. We must rejoice in our suffering. Because it is in only that way that we can follow Jesus, like we read previously. One Peter two again. For this is acceptable if for conscious, if for conscious towards God, a man endures griefs, suffering or wrong, suffering wrongfully. For what is it glory if when you sin? and are buffeted for it, you shall take it patiently. But if when you do well and suffer, you shall take it patiently. That is what is acceptable to God, that we do it gladly. We are called because Christ also suffered for us, 
and he left us that example. Two Corinthians four. We are inflicted in every way, but we're not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Remember, God only gives us what we can handle. He will never test us beyond what we can handle. Okay? There are many types of crosses that we can carry. There are physical crosses like my pain. You know, it was, it was, it was um, it's so oppressive because it was so constant and so never ending. But we can carry emotional crosses. We can carry a cross of emotion for someone we love. We can carry a cross of spiritual value if we have a burden for someone. So there are many, many different types of crosses. The cross that we can carry can change. From time to time, God can change the cross that we carry. Now, God took that cross of pain from me And that was for a very good reason, because when I was healed, my testimony has led many people to Christ. So the reason I even, it even happened was to glorify God. Just like the story where the disciples asked Jesus, um, what, what, who sinned in that man's family? Was it his parents? Was it his grandparents? Was it his other descendants? And Jesus said, no. He was afflicted to glorify God. And that's what happened to me. I was afflicted to glorify God. I didn't know it at the time. I mean, the whole 20 years that I suffered, I didn't need to suffer all that time. Because if I'd have listened to God's call, because he'd been calling me for the whole 20 years, it would have probably stopped a lot sooner. God would have taken it from me. So when I was healed, I was given another cross. And the new cross were multiple crosses. One of the crosses was the fact that my beautiful wife suffers the most debilitating, earth-shattering migraines that you could imagine. And I've lost count of the amount of times that I've prayed for her and begged God to heal her. But that is a cross of burden that I carry for my wife. But he gave me another cross as well after I was healed. I was struck down with fibromyalgia. Now, many of you probably don't know what that is, but it's it took them five years to, to, to um, classify what it was, this pain, this mystery pain I was getting. All my muscles in my body ache all the time. And if you squeeze one of my larger muscles, like my leg muscles or my arm muscles, I will probably hit the roof in pain because it's that sore. But it's a, it's a hard um, a condition to diagnose. And it took them five years to figure it out. But God gave me this new cross to bear. And I said to God, what, what, what's, 
what's this? You went through all the trouble to heal me. And now I'm in, back in pain again. But then I realised that I had to carry this new cross. I get good pain relief from it, for it. Uh, the doctors are very good with, um, I wear um, fentanyl patches that I change every three days on my arm. And that gives me very, very good pain. It's, it's very strong stuff. Um, the chemist carries it in their safe at the chemist shop um, because they can't just dish it out to anyone. Um, so that's two crosses I carry that are quite big. And I probably carry half a dozen more crosses from time to time if, if my grandchildren get sick or if, you know, they're all crosses. So be encouraged. You know, your cross might conserve a loved one, uh, someone you might carry a burden for, as I explained earlier. So it can vary and it can be um, for a very good reason. We can choose to carry only comfortable crosses, I suppose. Um, they've grown and known if we get a, a hard one, but that's not the way God works. Um, if we're comfortable and convenient, how are we going to understand what Christ went through for us? How are we going to understand suffering? How are we going to able to communicate our empathy for someone if we're counselling someone? Um, I've lost count of the amount of times that my suffering, the experience of my suffering, how often that has meant um, something very significant to people in the counselling rooms who come to me saying, well, you know, I can't cope. Well, if I have an easy life, how am I going to relate to that? How are they not coping? Uh, it doesn't work that way in the kingdom of God. So we have to know suffering. We have to Grin and bear it, I guess, because it's the way of God. But there are many rewards. You know, I was talking about the scripture, uh, John chapter 9. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth and his disciples said, Rabbi, who sinned? Was it this man or his parents? the reason he was born blind. Jesus said it was not this man or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. So we, we must understand that sometimes, you know, there's a reason for it to happen. Um, I know a lot of people who God has been speaking to them trying to get their attention, trying to get them to go back and go back to, to more prayer, um, go back to more scripture readings because they've been walking away from the Lord instead of towards the Lord. And sometimes the, the only way God can get someone's attention if they won't slow down is to make them sick. Then, hello, they end up in a bed at home or a hospital bed and what have they got? Lots of time on their hands suddenly. So he's got their attention. And sometimes that's what helps people lead people back to him. And sometimes that's God's last resort. I won't say that happens to everyone who's sick, of course, but that's one way God uses. 
Revelation 21.4. He will wipe away every tear from our eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning or crying nor pain for the former things have passed away. See, these are, these are things to encourage us now. Um, Romans 8, 18. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that was revealed to us. Of course, the glory of Christ. 1 Peter 5. And the God of all grace who called you to this eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you, make you strong and steadfast. 1 Peter 1, 6. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in the praise, glory and honour when Jesus is revealed. You know, these are golden words. James... The book of James 1.12 Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. And 2 Corinthians 4.17 For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs everything. I mean, what beautiful words. So pain and suffering is part of our walk. Pain and suffering is the only way we can understand what Christ went through, even in the smallest measure. And it's the only way we can be empathetic towards others so that we can encourage them, strengthen them with our, our own understanding, saying, well, look, you know, I understand what you're going through because I've been through that. I've been there. You know, people, people who talk to somebody who haven't been where they've been cannot possibly understand what they're going through. But because we do and can suffer, it gives us that leverage to say to our brother or our sister, Look, I don't know exactly what your pain is like, but let me tell you my story. And if you can throw in the, you know, the, the fact that God can heal just as quickly as he gives us a, so, some form of suffering, you know, that's also encouraging. So be encouraged. Be encouraged in your faith that it is through these things we're refined in the furnace of suffering, says Isaiah. I have refined you in the furnace of suffering. So we're being proven. We're, we're being refined like good steel. You know, good steel cannot become good steel until it's heated and and treated in certain ways. So we are refined in that same way and by the same similar process. So be encouraged. I've been 
so privileged in my walk with the Lord to see a lot of suffering and to see an awful lot of healings too. You know, this, um, these tiny children in um, the Mother Teresa sisters ward in Salem in India, uh, these unwanted and deformed babies. We prayed for this beautiful little boy in that cot. And he received a healing that very same day. He hadn't responded to anybody at all since he'd been there, since he'd been picked up off the streets. And after our prayer, one of the days we were there with the Sisters of Charity, he responded. And he showed that he had, could hear them. And he started to communicate by his actions. And I believe later on, he even began to start to talk. I've just had so many privileges in my walk with the Lord. I've um, done a lot of baptisms in India. Um, and I had a problem with that for a while, with things like baptizing people, because I'm no priest, far from it. I mean, yes, I'm a chaplain, a lay chaplain, but I had a great problem with it. And I went to Bishop Anthony Fisher when he was still our bishop with my problems. And I said to him, look, I'm a Catholic and I love being a Catholic. I'm a lay chaplain and I love doing that. But the things I'm asked to do in India, you know, I'm, I'm dedicating babies and um, baptizing people. And I said in that it's, it's not for Catholic people. It's for, you know, people of non-denominational churches mostly. But I said, is, is that a conflict, your grace? He said, Craig, he said, look, he said, I look at it this way. He said, you're being a good Catholic. I said, I don't get you. He said, well, you're bringing people to Christ, aren't you? And I said, well, yes. He said, well, then just keep doing what you're doing. Amen. That there's no conflict, conflict, confliction against you or the Catholic Church. So I, I left very... Um, very glad that particular day on that particular baptism i got to tell you i, I thought um john the baptist or jesus christ was going to walk over the next hill that was so so biblical but um there i am we we baptized on that particular day that was only about two years ago we baptized 23 new Christians in the local river. I mean, just such a great privilege that I have. It just defies... I, I, I often just say to God, you know, I get to see all this, I get to feel all this, I get to experience it, and I, I want it for all Christians. But he always tells me to be quiet. <laughs> But um, we, uh, when I went over three years ago, I was brought this baby to dedicate. And um, we're at a place called Bapatla. And um, it turned out 
it was a couple that came to us the year before, about probably 15 months before that was our previous trip. And this couple had come to us because they'd been trying to have children for five years. And um, this baby that they asked me to dedicate was the baby as a result of Rose and I praying for that couple the last time we had seen them. So it was a miracle baby. So God, God hears us. God grants our wishes. Um, I wish there were more things like that happening in Australia, but I think that sometimes our society is not quite as open as the people in countries that are a bit more poverty stricken. Um, I must admit I've only ever witnessed maybe half a dozen miracles here in Australia, whereas I've witnessed literally hundreds, if not thousands of miracles in India in 20 years. So it shows you the scale of things. Um, we're too comfortable. We don't need God. And that's part of the problem here in our Western society. But be encouraged that these things are happening in the world, all over the world. There are more miracles happening today than the number of miracles that were happening in Jesus' time. You think about that. It's just that they're not talked about. The media certainly won't talk about it because they think it's all nonsense. I was invited on to go into a radio show up in uh, Queensland. So I heard about the work we were doing overseas and in Australia. But when they interviewed us, um, the interviewer suddenly got very cold and um, tried to cut us short because we weren't saying what he wanted to hear. We were talking about things like miracles and, um, you know, the things that God can do. And all they were interested in talking about was, because um, we just <coughs> working in um, Broken Hill with the, the uh, uh, Aboriginal people, all he wanted to talk about was how bad the Aboriginals were and we wouldn't go there. Um, so, you know, things like miracles turn, turn the general media off because they're just not going to believe it unless they're Christians themselves. But be encouraged, these things are happening in the world all the time. And um, I just pray that, you know, any one of you who hasn't seen a miracle will see one. Um, but, you know, even some of the smallest things can be something that's come from God that maybe we don't even recognise. You know, I know that one day we were held up in the traffic and uh, we were very angry because we were going to be late for where we were going. But we were held up uh, just after we were behind this big truck and the truck got through but we didn't. From, from us onwards we were held up for half an hour. Anyway, when we were allowed to get going again, there was all these roadworks and stuff happening. We went maybe 15 minutes down the road and then we recognised the truck. And the truck had been in this massive accident with about six other cars. You know, so the Lord wanted to keep us away from that. So he stopped us. You, you can put no other spin on it. He wanted us not to be involved in that. So he caused us to be delayed. And for all our grumbling and complaining, um, we turned into Thanksgiving. <laughs> so sometimes we don't even know 
you know, we might be held up somewhere and God might be doing, and we may never find out why, but it might have been for something like that. It might have been um, so we didn't come into a certain situation. So miracles are happening, even ones that we don't recognise, but they're happening all the time. So I thank you for listening to me, and may God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Craig. So just for those who have joined for the first time in this prayer, Brother Craig has not only experienced the, um, the throne room of God in spirit, but also he is the spiritual director of St. Vincent de Paul, Australia wide. And it is a great privilege to have Brother Craig come here and uh, you know, teach us and shared his wonderful experiences and, and everything, the work and his walk with Jesus Christ. Now we invite all of us who are actually, who, who would, we would take this prayer request and Brother Craig will pray over your request, but all of the requests will accumulate as one and there will be one single prayer that Brother Craig will do. So, I'll just open the participants for, I'll unmute everyone. Actually, you can all unmute yourself. And uh, before, we, before we get into, yes, I will be writing, I'll be having my pen and paper and writing your intentions, petitions, and intentions. And Brother Craig is going to pray. So... Uh, start now. Before that, let us agree with Matthew eighteen nineteen. Let us agree with God and let us agree within us. God says, when two or more agree concerning anything, with one mind, one faith, oneness of your accord, one intention, in one body, one spirit, and in one Lord. And Our intention for prayers. Then those that whatever you agree is granted in heaven. Remember the heavens are opened. So I would like you to invite your intentions now. What is your intention? I myself will start. I'm praying for, I'm praying for a brother who I spent yesterday after my work. One hour is from Brisbane, and is not from our faith. He's from a different faith, and he would like to pray for his uh, business deal. And also, he has another intention, which is. Uh, his eczema after the anointing oil that we applied from Brother Craig, uh, which is blessed, his sores have stopped and he's just requested the receding of those sores because he has sores all over his body. So we have two intentions. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, the... Yes. Okay, sure. So, yeah, we'll go with Brother Don and then we'll go with Rose. Okay, so Brother Don, please. Yeah, um, I'd like to pray for my brother-in-law, Titus. Right. So, he has been experiencing full body pain for many months. Right. And the doctors are not able to diagnose the reason why. Sure. Yeah. Sure, sure. Thanks. Thanks, Brother Don. So, I'll note this down for Brother Titus, experiencing full body pain. Remember... When Brother Craig prayed over uh, a, pers a person who, who wanted a kidney donor, and this was uh, in September or August, it was a, a six-year-old child, yes, and there was Westmead Hospital, and the doctors had given, uh, they were not, no, there was total uncertainty that it could not find donor, and it was on for six months, and the parents were desperate. And uh, our, 
one of our own prayer member ameli actually testified that it is recorded testimony yeah. and when this prayer was said immediately within 24 hours on a sunday at 9 at 8:30 am the doctors the doctor from westmead hospital in sydney contacted the parents and said it is amazing we don't know what happened but you have a donor and we would like to have that operation in this particular next two days that was unbelievable so god moves not only healing of uh, body but soul spirit everything including deliverance of your finances your donors as you found out so yes uh, rose your test your request yeah i would like to pray for my marriage uh... yeah sure yeah. okay yeah. we will keep yeah. that intention okay. for a job partner uh, for a life partner yes sure life partner yeah yes parry uh, 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 yes this is uh, uh, ryan yes. here uh, yes brother ryan yeah uh, just to pray for my dad uh, as you know is not well and uh, sure. you know we will lift for our family as well sure so first intention brother ryan will lift francis xavier yes in prayer for his healing in the name of jesus xavier for and uh, yes for his healing and for the overall general intention for family yes yeah. perfect thank you brother ryan um anyone else uh yes brother i am uh, mrs shanti yes yes mr shanti yes uh since few months uh, my, my family life for some unwanted uh, friends like both male and female they are getting uh, we are very much disturbed in our family life sure uh, so to yeah, so uh, negative all the negative forces which are creating unwanted uh, confusions in our family uh, sure. should uh, oh, like, okay okay so should, I, yeah we will say any negative interferences or diabolical interferences from the family which are coming against your family yes we will pray for total deliverance there yeah, the blood of jesus has redeemed so that redemption includes deliverance yes yes and tonight we want as brother craig is going to pray special anointing prayer your you will experience that total total deliverance from all diabolical interferences okay uh, there was someone else sorry i missed there is another request Hi. from sister elizabeth and sister Hi. elizabeth has requested for joan who has ulcer in her leg and it hasn't been healing for a while so it's in she is in pain okay so for a lady called joan and this is this is great so you pray also in person you pray as a proxy for the person yes right? it's my okay. oh. yes yes okay sister elizabeth that's wonderful oh. we'll pray for um, sister joan healing yeah sure Harry, sister linda yes linda hari can you pray for my husband to yes. return to the lord and yes, um, of course yes for family relationships to yes. uh, be uh, the sure. same thing what that other lady said yes and then also for my brother in law who yes. uh, will go they did a test of covid on him but yes. they could not find out it was showing negative it was not yes. showing negative or positive yes. but he has to go for a operation on heart operation yes. if at all there is some blockage sure okay thank you very sure. thank you oh. perfect perfect oh. yes we want you to believe these there were six here yeah, just one second there was six another pari yes 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 uh i would also like to request you to pray for my brother elison okay uh, for his okay. Uh, yeah yeah sure marriage. we will pray for elison yes yeah yeah okay okay rose that's for perfect we will pray for elison's marriage so just going back to linda conversion of ray and then family relationships and for brother in law who who is under who is soon to undergo heart operation right linda yeah okay sorry parry uh, he's they will be doing that the test you know that dye test yes. because uh, they found that some something is very low i, I yes. don't know exactly what it's called so yes. that if it is still low they he will have to operate immediately because he's already had two heart yes uh, heart attacks yes. sure sure so, sure 
Yes. Just pray for that everything goes well. Thank Perfect. you. Perfect. Yes, yes. Isaiah 53, 4, the Lord has carried. He has borne and taken away our griefs, pains, sufferings. So we will definitely, those that condition will be totally transformed. Anyone else? Yes, Brother Barry, I would like to... Yes, Sister Sheila. Um, she's in bed at the moment and she's in the, getting bed sores and sure. Sure. finding it difficult to get up and uh, not responding very well. Sure. So, so Sister yeah. Sheila's mom and Sister Sheila's mom is in bed and... Uh, her condition is getting from, as we say, bad to worse. That is the current condition, yes. right? Yes. yes. Bad to worse, yes. And it doesn't seem to be responding very well now. And right. And finding it difficult to feed her. And all. Yes, sure. She doesn't seem to be responding very well. Yeah. Okay, so we and are also, totally... Yes, yes. I also pray for my house that has been put up on sale. It's yes. still waiting to hear for a move from yes. our house to the next. So nothing has been happening so far. We thought it would happen before Christmas. So just to lift it up in prayer as well. Yeah, sure. So house for sale and for mom. Sure. Definitely. Thank you, Sister Sheila. Anyone else? Okay, so now we will pray. Brother Craig will pray. Oh. Okay, we have one more prayer request from we have one more prayer request from this child here, Xavier. Oh. And he says there is one child in his class, he is good to him one day and bad to him the next day. And that pattern is very, very repetitive oh. and disturbing for him. Yeah. So we take that prayer intention to the Lord. That's good. And Pari, also for my family in South America, please. Okay, Sister Elizabeth. Yes, your family, all family in... South America. South America, yeah, the sure. The problem with COVID-19 is, is so big over there. Yes, yes, sure. Thank you. COVID-19 issue. And we also have an intention for Steffi. So Steffi has one intention for... Healing to okay, yeah, sure. As we pray, um, I'm going to anoint everybody spiritually and be assured. That I will continue to pray for these intentions until they're resolved. So I've done this uh, with all your previous intentions in the past weeks. Uh, I've kept uh, praying, um, but I thought uh, as the intentions seem to be growing, um, I'll write them down so it's uh, less likely that I'll forget. <laughs> so um, we've got the spiritual oil here. So um, I just anoint all of you and all of your family and all of your friends and all of those you are praying for in the name of the Father and the name of the Son and the name of the Holy Spirit. We just ask for God's spiritual anointing on all of you and all of your friends and those you are uh, caring for. So, Lord, we just come before you as just the humble beings that we are, Lord God. Uh, who are we before you, Lord? We, we are mere dust before your presence, Lord. But, Lord, you love us and we know that you Love to give good things to those who love you, Lord, which is all of us. Because we love you, Lord, you love to give us good things. You love to reward us. So, Father, it is your perfect will to, uh, yes, uh, to afflict us, Lord, so that we can grow and learn. But it is also your intention to uh, heal us when 
that suffering becomes more than we can bear. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we just uh, hold before you uh, Don. Uh, we just pray for his uh, brother-in-law, Titus, uh, who's suffering complete body pain, Lord God. We just know, we know, Lord, that uh, you, your will is to heal him so that he might bring you glory the way you healed me and my testimony has brought you glory. So we, we just pray now. Us. We pray in the spirit yes. and in the power yes. of the name, the blood and the cross of Jesus Christ yes. to Jesus. alleviate Titus' pain, Lord God, yes. to uh, bring it to an end so that you might be glorified yes. and Lord, so that he can sing your praises, Lord God. So we thank you and we praise you. You move in Titus right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask that you move in Titus now, that your spirit will be moving in his body, working away that pain, making it a thing of, of mere memory, Lord God. So thank you. Thank you, and we praise you, Lord God, as you are glorified. And we ask for Sheila, Lord, that as her mother lays in that bed, Lord God, Yes. That your Holy Spirit, oh, Jesus. your Holy Spirit yes. would move upon her body, Lord yes. God. Yes. That your Spirit would root out anything that is not of you, Lord yes. God. And that her worsening condition would be alleviated, Lord God. So that she too might glorify you, Lord God. So that she too might praise your name, Lord God. Amen. Yes. And we also pray for this house sale, Lord God, yes, Lord. that, Lord, um, as you do love to give us good things as your children, Lord, we ask that you would uh, uh, just speed up the sale of this house, Lord God. Yes, Lord. You would make it possible for them to move forward, Lord yes. God. In the name of Jesus. But we just know through the blood of Christ yes. that you're moving on Sheila's mother as we speak. Yes. So yeah. heal her, cleanse her, love her, yes. minister to Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Wash her with your blood and protect her with your cross, Lord God. As blood of the Lamb. Just uh, ask that uh, for Ran, um, was it Francis Xavier? Yes. And the healing of uh, the family, Lord God. We just Most pray for good. all of these good intentions, Lord God. They're good, honest Most prayer intentions, Lord God, that have been brought before us this night. Lord, Lord, you want you want to love us, Lord God. You want to shower us with your blessings. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, you want us to carry crosses, but you want us also to uh, move freely in life. And and to uh, help alleviate the sufferings of those we love, Lord God. Name of Jesus. Rule and reign in Ram's life, Lord God. We pray for Francis Xavier for Hallelujah. right now in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. So through the blood of Jesus, they be washed, name of Jesus. they be cleansed, and purified, Lord God. How many you, Lord? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. She are a mate, a la bashanda. And Lord, we pray for name of Jesus. We pray against negative intentions. Yes. Lord, that you would rule and reign. Yes. In their lives, Lord God. That you would name of Jesus. Come these negative, uh, negative purposes that uh, people are, are doing uh, to shanty, Lord God. We just know that you can do all things and we can ask you all things because when in the name of Jesus are gathered in your name, you are there with us. Name of Jesus. That is your promise, and we claim that promise, Lord God, that you will reign in this family, that the negative intentions will be ceased, and that the Christ's rule would come upon this family, upon this household, Lord God. And Lord, we bring Elizabeth before you. Lord, as uh, we pray for Joanne, leg, the leg ulcer, Lord God. Lord, I've seen leg ulcers 
disappear before oh, my eyes, Lord God. So we pray that you would remove this leg also, Lord God. That it is yes, Lord. Lord God. The powerful name of Jesus. We cannot uh, want this infection to continue, Lord God, because infection brings worse infection. Yes. Lord God, so we ask that it be ceased in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name be of healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. That your Holy Spirit would fall on Joanne yes, as we speak right now. Yes. And to call upon that mighty name. Hallelujah. Lord, that uh, their family in South America, Lord God, yes. would come through Jesus. this terrible situation. Yes. We cannot imagine how bad it is there. We cannot imagine what they're going through, Lord God, with the mercy on all humanity. We have been spoiled in this country, Lord God, in this way. So, rule and reign over the COVID in the Elizabeth family in South America, Lord God, that uh, your, your divine mercy would just bless them, love them, cleanse them, and heal them. Parry's friends, sores, Lord. Yes. We pray for those sores, Lord God, to be gone. Yes. In the past. Yes. Lord, sores bring infection and the infection can Thank you, Lord. Lord. So we ask that you be healed in the name of Jesus. Over these sores. And that you would bless the business, name of Jesus, Lord God. That you would cross of Jesus, business, Lord God, and that your name would be glorified because of these healings tonight, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, that your mighty power would be Hallelujah. Hallelujah. known by many more people, Lord God, so that many more people will come to faith and love you, Lord God. Cross of Jesus. We pray for a future marriage for Rose, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. How many people look for me? Yes, the name of Jesus. Or wanting a partner. Uh, I've lost count, Lord God. So all things. No, all no, things are possible. But you, Jesus. Jesus. Name of Jesus. All things we can ask you, Lord God. Because of Jesus. you told us. You told us, Lord, that even if we have the faith of a mustard seed. Yes. In the name of Jesus. In the name so long as we have the faith, Lord God. So we pray in faith tonight for Rose's future marriage, Lord God. May you rule and reign in her life. And may she be attracted to the person that you have set aside for her, Lord God. That special person, Lord God. So we bless you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. All things are possible. We pray for Linda. Hallelujah, name of Jesus. Pray for her husband to come back to the home of God. Yes. Lord, we ask you to return this lost sheep yes. to you, Lord God. We ask that you just fill him with your love, with the desire to seek you out again, Lord God. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Of Nazareth. Lord God, you, you want. Uh, good uh, Christian marriages, Lord God. So yes. we want Linda to be equally God, in the true faith, Lord God. And we pray for her brother-in-law, Lord God, for this heart operation, but that these heart attacks would cease. And Lord God, that you would guide the hands of these doctors, Lord God, to fix his problems, Lord God. Send him home whole and clean, Lord God. Whether you send your Holy Spirit upon him right now and heal him right now, or whether you move the hands of the doctors, Lord God. Either way, Lord, it'll be your miracle, Lord. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God. Because Thank all you, things are possible for those who love you, Lord yes, God. Yes. Lord Jesus. The last shall be first, and we ask that uh, uh, Xavier, uh, friend, uh, this good and ga bad behaviour, Lord, we just ask that it would uh, manifest itself into some kind of understanding that their friendship would grow and blossom, Lord God, and that there'd be no bad behaviour, but only good. So we, we just ask that you you give um, yes, Lord. Heal him, Lord. the wisdom 
the wisdom to know how to handle this friend in a good and godly way, Lord God. Give him wisdom. And Lord, we just thank you that, uh, Lord, you are moving in Steffi right now, Lord God. That your, your Holy Spirit would just fill her with every good thing under heaven, Lord God. Lord, you would move in her, Lord God. And you would bless this uh, uh, baby, Lord God, that she's carrying, that you would, uh, Lord, you would just be, she'd be blessed by how good it all goes, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You will rule Jesus. and reign over this new life, Lord God, that you would, uh, Lord, heal any sicknesses or, or, or uh, morning sickness or anything like that, Lord God, that you would just make it a, a blessed time, a heavenly time. And that, Lord, it would all go the way you ordained it to happen, Lord God. It would be perfect. In the name of Jesus Nazareth. Amen. You and Steffi, Lord God, that you fill her with every good thing that you have for her. Amen. Every Lord. good thing that you have stored up in heaven for this moment, for this prayer, for this moment in time, that you would impart that to Steffi tonight, Lord God. Thank you. Amen. We praise you, Lord God. Because you rule and reign, and we just ask that you do the same for all of these intentions, Lord God, and all of these beautiful people, that they be all blessed, Lord God, and that everything that you do tonight, Lord God, and in the coming days would be, uh, would give you great glory, Lord God, and uh, just be unbelievable to those who do not understand, Lord God, and that would make people think if their God can do that, wow. In the name of Jesus. We want that reaction, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Yes. We want that reaction. We want witnesses. Yes, Lord. Do all of the name of Jesus. We want uh, um, testimonies to come out of all these healings, Lord God, because you deserve the praise, Lord God. You deserve the honor. I can do nothing. None of us can. Jesus. A bit of faith in Jesus Christ. Yes, Jesus. And a lot of So we thank you, Lord, as you rule and reign. Amen. Amen. All these things. Thank you, Lord, for in hearing us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. As we pray in tongues together. She alamata te alamata. In of Jesus. Name of Jesus, name of Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I'm Holy Spirit. Me, the blood of Christ, Lord Jesus, upon Lord, all of us. Thank you. We praise you, Lord God, because you are a mighty God. And, and for me, Joseph, brother. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, this whole name of Jesus. Pray Lord, for Jesus. Harry's friend. We pray for Don's intention. Rose, yes. Ran, Shanti, Elizabeth, Linda, yes. Sheila, yes. Xavier, yes. Steph, name of Jesus. And uh, Alison, Lord God, we just know that you will rule and reign in all of these situations. Your glory would fall on all of these people, Lord God. And then, Lord Jesus, nothing on this earth could stop it, Lord God, because you rule and reign yes, Lord in the universe. Yes, Lord. Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Honor and all the praise. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Glory be to you, O Lord. Glory be to you.
Glory Thank be to God on high and on earth to men of good will. Thank you, Jesus. Praise to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. I believe that through this prayer, led by intercession of brother, by Brother Craig, all these intentions, they have been answered by God. So whatever we are going to pray in divine mercy, it is not going to pray double. We are going to just pray divine mercy, not to, not to a saint or someone, not to Saint Faustina, but through with Saint Faustina and with Mother Mary, offering the blood and body of Christ. And we will explore some biblical myths. So just very quickly, this will be very, very quick. Uh, so, <laughs> this, God's glory. Yes. yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's uh, Chris who would like to also try a little bit. Okay. Yes. Okay. One more. <laughs> Okay, now Ruth, yeah, that's okay, yes, good. Yeah, the expert. Now, yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay, praise God, hallelujah. <laughs> One last try for Chris and then we'll go into divine mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 You expired, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth. The souls. And the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O font of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop of the whole world. world. And empty yourself out upon us. The water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. One more time, believing, O Lord, blood and water, as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. All together, our Father in heaven, Father. holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your kingdom come. Your will be done. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us now in the hour of our death. As we know, uh, Diary 429 says, You will prepare the world for my final coming. This is Jesus talking. And he says, He who refuses to pass through his mercy will pass through his justice. And that day of justice is near. Altogether, Apostles' Creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, buried, he descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. He will come to the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Uh, before we go into the first mystery where Jesus sweats blood in the garden of Gethsemane, we see divine mercy as we see in there, there was once an event in the ninth, 24th verse of the ninth chapter of Gospel of Mark. And this person, he said to the Lord, Lord, 
I believe, but help my unbelief. Mm -hmm. And when that prayer was done by the person and Jesus exactly addressed that prayer. And because his faith was increased, his child who was that suffering from epilepsy was completely healed at that moment. So as we enter into divine mercy, we say the same prayer, Lord, increase my faith so that I can witness the awesome, wonderful relationships and miracles through you and with you. So same prayer, Mark 9, 24, Lord, help my unbelief, increase my faith. The next, if next moment, Jesus addressed that prayer. He increased the person's faith and then there was a miracle. You see, redemption of Jesus brings forth healing, deliverance of body, soul, spirit of the person or the family, finances, and also the interferences within the fellowship, the body of Christ. Yes. And any injuries that inflict you through diabolical interferences. So let's, let's pray the first mystery altogether, Eternal Father, I offer you body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement of our sins and those of the uh, Michelle, would you please like to lead us for, the, for this ticket? Sure. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. The second mystery, Jesus is now tied to the pillar and scourged. We see Matthew 8, 17 says, When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him. And he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. Matthew 8, 16. And in the verse 17, St. Matthew <coughs> says, He healed, this, this is because God's promise came true. Just as prophet Isaiah had said, he healed our disease and made us well. And this is coming true in your and my life and those whom you are praying for and all those who are watching this on YouTube, TikTok, social media, Facebook, any, any social media. Yes. God's power is coming alive into their lives. Amen. So all together we say, Eternal Father, 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 I offer you, body and blood, divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement of our sins and those of the world. Alka, if you are online, if could you please lead us with the decade? For the sake of His sorrow, for the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, for the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. So the third mystery, we now pray, we now go into this, this 
verse, which is John chapter 16, verse 20. Jesus said to his disciples and to all of us, you and me today, Amen, Amen. I say to you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will become joy. Amen. John chapter 16, Amen. verse 20. So this, anyone, as Brother Craig today gave us a beautiful, <laughs> wonderful breaking of the word and all these verses from Romans, Luke, Corinthians. And we now take those to our heart. And we understand now that when we turn the sufferings to God, it is redemptive. Just like Paul said, my grace, God said to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. Yes. So third mystery, Jesus now is crowned with thorns, the king of the kings, the, the alpha and the omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end of everything. Jesus, he became carpenter's son. He came to Bethlehem, was born in a stable with, with animals. Yes. He was so humble to obey to the point of death on the cross. Yes. That Jesus we are glorifying now. Philippians says, and therefore God glorified him and exalted him and gave him the name at which, at whose name every knee in heaven, on earth and underneath and under the nether, in the netherworld will bow and confess that Jesus is the Lord. So this mystery we offer for those impossible situations <laughs> in your life. Eternal Father altogether. We offer you for so you the Lord Jesus Christ in atonement in for us the Lord of the whole world. The whole world. Uh, Shanti, Sister Shanti, would you like to lead us, please? Yes, brother. For sake of Jesus, sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us, on us, in, the on us in the whole world. For sake of Jesus, sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us, in the whole world. For sake of Jesus, sorrowful passion. Have our Father, have mercy on us in the whole world. For sake of Jesus, sorrowful passion. 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 Our Amen. Father, have mercy on us in the world. For sake of Jesus, sorrowful passion. Our Amen. Father, have mercy on us in the whole world. The fourth mystery, we now go into Psalm 22, verse 14. This was prophesied about our Lord Jesus Christ as King David wrote this messianic psalm, messianic prophecy. It was the life of Jesus that is poured on the cross like water and all his bones were out of joint yes. and his heart and all his internal organs melted within him like wax. Psalm 22 verse 14. But he went through all this to give you salvation, to give you healing and to give you complete deliverance yes. and which you now claim through his divine mercy, which is nothing but offering his blood and his body to the father and nothing can be hold, held back. Yes. So we, we pray for those, especially those stubborn uh, events or circumstances in your life. Right now, Holy Spirit is taking control. And you will see the glory of God in those situations. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank so fourth Jesus. mystery now, Jesus carries our cross, your and my cross. I can't even imagine 
carrying my own cross and infinite thanks to the lord for he has done it for me and for you Amen. eternal father i offer you Uh, Sister Paulin, if you can please lead us. Sister Paulin, Sister Paulin, with us. Okay, if not, then we'll go for uh, Rohan. Can you please? Yes. Have mercy on us, world. For the sake of Jesus, sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us, world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. This fifth mystery, Jesus now offers his life on the cross. This is one event we would like to share. This Friday was my day off. So we all went to the mass. And you would not believe that right in the car park, there were about eight, eight, nine, nine or ten, all of us people there. And right in the car park of St. Nicholas of Myra Church, right in the middle of the car park, we all started praying. And it was so loud and so spontaneous and we could feel the moving of the Holy Spirit that the, uh, those having lunch at that time, they opened their windows and they started lo looking at what is happening here. Amazing. Steffi was there. Yeah. So she is the witness and the children were there. And it was almost like first Pentecost. We all were spontaneous in our spontaneous praying. It was just... Mighty outpouring. Mighty outpouring. Yeah. And that flow was so, so smooth. So it yes. was just flowing like a river. Yes. John 7, 37. Yes, it was the, from the believers' heart. All of them in agreement. Yes, Lord. It reminded me of the upper room. Yes. But more on that later, next time. But the same Holy Spirit is taking control of your life. Yes. Because Jesus has promised and he has given us that spirit. Amen. So this last mystery, when Jesus said, Father, forgive them, or they do not know, forgiveness is important. And the same way that Jesus forgave. Those who pierced him with the lance, he forgave. Those who pierced him with the nails, he forgave. Those who trust that the crown of thorns, he forgave. Those who spat on his holy face, oh, oh, oh. We forgive. He forgave Judas, but he could not receive his forgiveness. He forgave the crowd who exchanged him, preferred him for Barabbas. Peter, Peter his, his rock, Kephas, who denied him and swore in front of the servant girl in Ga from Galilee that he, he swore that he did not, he doesn't even know. Oh, and those apostles. Also, oh, his yeah, who who just abandoned him, mm. and three times in Matthew twenty six, Matthew says Jesus threw himself down before them, and just said, "Pray one hour." Can't you even pray one hour? And they were still pre they were still dozing, and in this the Lord forgave them. And in Matthew 10, 8, our last concluding mystery, he said, heal the sick. This is the announcement of the kingdom of God. Raise the dead. So he's expecting us to raise the dead. His unchanging word is the same. 
He won't change this world. Cure those with any sickness and cast out devils in his name. Because Mark 16, 16 says, you and I who are listening are empowered with that. Only condition is if you believe and are baptized. That's it. And the signs will follow you. You don't have to do anything. Just lay your hands. Amen. Amen. And give freely Amen. as you have received freely. And with this, we pray the last mystery. Um, Eternal Father. Eternal Father. I offer you the body and blood. The body and blood. The body Yes, your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. And our last mystery, we uh, request maybe uh, Sister Olga, could you please lead us? Sister Olga. I think Sister Olga is uh, maybe Brother Don. Brother Don. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. Sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. Sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty God, holy mortal one, have mercy on us and the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy mortal one, have mercy on us and the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy mortal one, have mercy on us and the whole world. Our closing prayers. Eternal God, mercy is endless and inexhaustible. So kindly upon us and in that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. Wow. Amen. Amen. Dear all, the prayer meeting has concluded and what a wonderful prayer meeting we had. And thank you to Brother Craig for this. And thank you all participants. Our next Saturday prayer meeting will be led by Sister Agnes. And um, that would we invite you all to bring as many friends possible for this. And after that will be Brother Jude, Sister Anastasia, and it will continue. So thank you all. Thank God you. bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, all. Thank you brother. Thank you, Perry. thank you, brother. The, the Lord gives, gives, okay. forgives. And we get, get, and forget. Okay. So let's always, this Christmas, Advent season, and New Year, Christmas. walk with the attitude of gratitude towards our Lord. Amen. And glorify him. Amen. Amen. Yes. Lord, yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Merry, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Wishing you all a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Oh, yes, yes, yes definitely. Yes. Wish you all the same. Wish you all too. Yes, it's a blessed Christmas to all. Yes, Brother Craig also. Brother Craig would love. Brother Craig. Thank you. Brother Craig, wish you a blessed Thank Christmas. Thank you. Merry, Merry Christmas, everyone. Yes. Thank you. Yes, I hope you all have a blessed Christmas. I don't like the word merry. Yes, uh, it 
has the wrong connotation, although there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, I think uh, all of us Christians should say, have a very blessed, blessed. Christmas. Blessed, blessed Christmas, yes. So there's, um, there's another whole talk in that, I suppose, but, um, you know, that people talk about magic and about this and that, but they're, you know, and luck. There is no such thing as luck. You're either blessed Amen. or you're not blessed. Yes. You're either in God's favour or you're not in God's favour. So I ask that you all have a very blessed Christmas. Amen. And uh, may Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yes. May Yahweh yes. make his face to shine upon you yes. and be Thank gracious you. to you. Yes. May Yahweh yes. uncover his countenance to you and bring you great peace at this Amen. special time. Amen. 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 Thank you all. God bless you. Thank you, all. Bless thank, you. Thank, thank you, brother. Thank A you. Blessed Christmas. Thank you. Yes. All thank you. sacrament of confession and thank inner you. welcome to Jesus Christ, who will re reign in your hearts. Yes. Amen. And the charge Amen. for 26, Christmas continues. Yes. yes. Welcome, baby. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you, Perry. Thank you, Steffi. Thank, thank you all. Bye. 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 Thank you, God Thank you, Brother yes. Craig. That was a Thank wonderful Thank you all. Call. God bless. Yes, yes, Thank sure, sure. Thanks. Thanks. God bless. See you all soon. Thank you.